It's Dr. DeCubilis here. I wanted to take a minute to go into a little bit of details over how the healing process happens and why this is so important to people with personal injury cases, but accident and injury cases as well. Because if we understand this, we can not only know how to actually diagnose things properly, but we can get them the right kind of treatment at the right time. And it tells us when and if we're gonna have permanency. So the whole thing is called uh, wound healing. So anytime we have an accident, injury, or trauma, our body goes through the wound healing process. Now with this, there's three distinct phases. So the first phase is the inflammation phase. Now during the inflammation phase, this typically lasts up to 72 hours post-trauma. Now during this phase, the goals are we're trying to start decreasing pain, but we're really trying to decrease inflammation and swelling. Now the interesting thing about this, and this is where we start to get into problems with people, is that this inflammation phase, while it initially lasts 72 hours, if they re-aggravate or re-injure, then it starts back over. So a lot of times in my office, I'll find people that have been re-injuring or re-aggravating issues, and while it originally started a long time ago, they're still back in that inflammation phase because they keep re-aggravating or re-injuring it. So it's really important to understand where we're at in this healing process. So during the inflammation phase, this is why we would use ice over heat. We're trying to decrease the, we don't want to have um, uh, dilation of the blood vessels because we don't want to spread that heal or the, the swelling out or spread the inflammation. Because if we do that, we can actually increase treatment time or healing time by two weeks. So we don't want that. We don't want to make things take longer to heal. So after this inflammation phase, we get to the repair phase. Now the repair phase is where most of the healing happens. This is going to be lasting weeks, up to about 14 weeks. Now during this time, what your body is doing is it's laying down connective tissue fiber to repair all of the damaged tissue. Now it's using immature collagen to repair the damaged tissue, whether that be muscle, whether that be tendon or ligament. The problem with this is that there are four negative effects of healing that happen if this does not have proper functionality. So during this time, your body is putting immature collagen there. If we have proper motion of the motor uh, joint and everything's moving properly, the muscle tendon, the ligament, everything works fine, then it's going to mature and we're going to actually um, be back to where we should be. Same thing happens when you go to the gym and you do a bicep curl, you're tearing muscle fiber. Now your body puts immature collagen in there, but because the muscle was working the right way, now they, we get more muscle fiber, you get stronger. However, if you were to go to the gym and do a bicep curl and then wrap your arm like this and leave it there for three weeks, that immature collagen is going to turn into scar tissue and adhesions. You're going to become weaker. You're going to be less flexible and you're more prone to injury in the future. So you've actually made yourself worse even though you exercised. Similar things happen after an injury. So when we get to this repair phase, the, the goal is that we have to make sure that we restore proper, uh, proper motion. So you've got three range of motion, active, passive, and joint. All three of them need to be restored to normal or as close to normal as possible. This way we don't have abnormal biomechanics and movement, we don't have overpressure, we don't have loading, and then we don't have arthritis or degeneration that sets in according to Wolf's Law. So really, really important. The next thing is we wanna make sure we get rid of pain. This way we can take away whatever's causing the, the symptoms in the first place, and we're not going to have permanency. And then finally, we wanna make sure that all of this happens within this time frame. Because if we don't, the first thing that happens is you can heal only up to a max of 70% as strong as you were before. That scar tissue I told you is not as strong as normal muscle or uh, a tendon fiber. And because of that, it makes you more prone to have injury with normal activity in the future. Because you're only uh, up to, up to, remember, up to 70%. And then when you have an injury on top of that, now you're at max 70% of 70% of 70%. So we start going down and down and down and down and down. So really important we get to heal the right way. Next thing is you can heal only up to a max of 70% as flexible. Not only are these uh, scar tissue adhesions weaker, but they're also not as flexible. We're talking about collagen, not elastin that's forming in there. So we've got more rigidity as well. So now we're not able to bend and move with the same, uh, same ease that we were prior. The next thing that happens though, is your body starts forming increased peripheral nerve fibers in the area of the injury. It's trying to use these to speed along the healing pr process and make them get better. However, when things don't heal properly, because we have no more, nerve, more nerve fibers, it means that not only do they get more pain, but they get pain with activities that they didn't used to get pain with. So this is why it's so important to make sure that when we're charting and tracking patients, we do things like duties under duress and loss of lifetime enjoyment of activities, 
because they now have a permanent issue due to the way that the body healed according to the three phases of healing. So the goal is we're trying to minimize that as much as possible. Once they get done with the repair phase, they move into the last phase, which is the remodel phase. In the remodel phase, there is no more tissue being laid down, no more collagen. But at this point is where we really wanna focus on strengthening. So at first we started getting rid of pain, then we worked on really working on flexibility and range of motion. Now we work on the body to strengthen to stay that way. Because what we don't want to have happen is have a re-aggravation or re-injury and get on this cycle like that. Now the rem uh, remodel phase can last up to two years. It's not going to last for, for most for two years, but what this also means is that they can still be getting benefit from doing home exercises on their own, even when they're not being treated in a doctor's office. So it's important for the patient to keep up with home activities that they're doing. But there will come a point to where we reach a threshold to where there is no more improvement that's being done. But we have to make sure we know that you shouldn't be looking for the lack of improvement at week three if we're not even done with the repair phase at that time. It doesn't make sense which is also why you wouldn't look to sell the case at week four if we're still in that repair phase. We wanna wait till we get into the remodel phase before we start talking about uh, permanency um, at, that, at that point. So I know that was a long explanation. I really should have gone into even more detail, but I wanted to keep this watchable for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, Dr. DeCubilis, and you can reach me at 630-435-6461.